Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logies. Um, today we're going to be talking about the aeroid family, which has become very popular in recent years, philodendrons, and in this case, alocasias and scandopsis and such. One of the things that happens as we grow these plants is we have these sports that create variegation. And here's a leaf of Frydeck that has, this is alocasia Frydeck, that has uh, created a variegated pattern. It's actually quite beautiful, this one, this particular leaf right here. The problem with a good part of our variegations, particularly those that suddenly pop out into our growing area and we get really excited, is they're not stable. They're what's called unstable variegation, and it doesn't hold as that plant continues to grow. And this actually is an unstable variegation, and you can often tell that by the fact that the patterning here is really erratic. And if I look at that growing stem, which is actually back here, you can see that whole plant right here is right in my hand. And this is the amount of variegation we've got. We've actually lost some of it in this leaf. And we have a young leaf coming out here. I can see a little bit. So there is enough stability to that that this plant has some value to separate from our mother plant. Now, if it was just one leaf and then it disappeared, we probably wouldn't bother with it. And really what happens is there's a dome of cells that create the entire plant. It's called the apical meristem. And that variegation on this particular lead here or on the entire plant is only part of that dome. So as that dome grows out and turns into an entire plant, pieces of it go variegated and then pieces of it stay green. So we're going to take this out and divide it up. And it's quite easy. This is a 10 inch pot we have in a clay pot, which we like to um, grow in. It's got a good root system on it. There's been some collapse there, maybe, oh, probably back in the winter time. Not all alocasias are this way, but Frydeck actually has this, at least in the north, here, has this kind of dormant period. And that's the time you really want to, well, you want to ignore it to the degree that it's not going to be necessarily pretty. But you also want to make sure that you're regulating your water properly with some dryness and keeping your temperature up. It gets really stressed if it gets put into cold. Um, 60 is the minimum, and generally we like to run them around 65 degrees minimum temperature. So let's see if we can find that lead again. It's off of this offshoot right here. If we go back and we grab that, you see there's our variegation. And that's actually one of the older ones in this clump. And what I use, I take my trusty pocket knife and I'm simply going to slice down through that to try to sever it and remove it from the main trunk. Now, in doing this division, you really want to try to get a part of a root or as much root as you can onto it. You could cut this off and root it just like a cutting from a regular plant but it's going to put it into a whole lot more stress. If you've got some roots there for it to um, start regrowing from, you're just going to take up water and you're not going to go into that, you know, terrible wilt that they go into and fuss around with removing leaves and so on. So we then we just gently pull it away. You can see here we go, we're pulling it away. And we've got a lot of great roots. Look at that, beautiful roots. And there's my cut on the back side. So I, it came out, that shoot came out of the side and, and then shot up and I've cut right down through the side of it. And then we're going to take um, a clay pot. We grow them in clay mainly because of the um, stress of root rot on them in the winter time. Always a good idea. And we simply just put the roots in, get them stable. We want to put this down far enough that it's stable to um, hold itself up so it doesn't tip over. And um, put our soil in, just tuck it in like so. There we go, and now it's a nice, stable, center potted. And of course, when you're potting, always give your plant a good drink of water. You want that to thoroughly saturate so the, all those roots on the bottom are going to have contact to mo with moisture. There was another plant over here. There's one that's got another variegated leaf. I could cut that off and probably get it to go as long as I got a piece of stem on it. But right at the moment, I'm going to probably just repot this and just watch that one. I, I got a feeling that's going to be a good one because um, as I look at it, the variegation is really solid in that. So that actually might be better than this one in terms of the amount of variegation it holds. This plant was a little underpotted, so I'm going to pot it up a little bit to bring some more soil in and give it a little more to, room to go on. And I'm filling in the area, obviously, that I took the plant off. And I really. By cutting that off and pulling like that, I didn't do any damage to this plant at all. This, this plant doesn't even know tomorrow morning when it wakes up, it's not even going to know that, that anything happened to it. So there you go. That's um, our Frydeck variegated, and that's how to separate out that variegated plant to make a new one out of it.
I hope you enjoyed that, and if you'd like more information, visit us at logis.com.